Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another awesome day here in the mega shop on the Stony Ridge Farm. This is your first time here. This is a 112 by 50 foot steel structure, steel shop. And today we're gonna to be installing a tuxedo lift. It's a two post lift from Northern Tool. I'll post a link to this critter down in the video description. Without further ado, we're gonna start moving equipment and getting things ready. We're gonna show you everything that we had to do in order to get set up and get this lift in the appropriate position. We're also gonna give you all the specs that you need to know and teach you how to install your own lift in your own shop. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you this what you can kiss. First things first, I want to tell you exactly how we're doing this. This is my friend Josh. I'm Josh. And how I'm not doing? Yeah, I'm not joshing you about that. <laughs> It's still funny, huh? So nope. <laughs> Josh was in the military with me. I was in the Air Force. He was in the Air Force. We worked in civil engineering. He's a carpenter and I was an electrician. So we've got a good carpenter on hand right here to help me with this job. Really fun job. And it's a two person job for sure. Don't Definitely. you think? Yeah. You yep. need two people. These safety. towers are heavy and for safety. So we're going to go over here and we'll show you the towers. This again is a tuxedo lift from Northern Tool and Equipment. That is tower number one. Tower number two, you have one tower that has the mount point for your hydraulic pump. We got our hydraulic pump sitting right there. That needs to be on the driver's side or preferably on the driver's side. So as we pull in to our lift right here, we can hop out and it'll be re really easily accessible. We won't have to run around the car in order to access it. So this is tower number two. Before we position tower number two where we want it, I wanted to show you guys exactly what we did. So we have a string line right here. You can see that pink string. It goes from our garage door edges right here. So we want to be in the center of the garage door. We have a string line here and a string line here. And we measured it all off. So we have a perfect straight edge to go off of. Now, we went over and this block, you can see the cut lines in this block of concrete. We wanted to be at least six inches off that cut line. We actually went three feet off of that cut line and about two and a half feet off of that. The thickness of the concrete here is about six inches. It's fiber reinforced, it's really strong. Right here is our line for where the edge of our uh, post is gonna go. So we're gonna go right here and right here, just so you guys know, so you can see Chalk line here, chalk line there, and that's the center mark, okay? This is approximately 18 inches wide. We already have the other one in position. I'll show you that. Got a little hydraulic fluid on the ground, but it's in position right there, and that's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna mount it up. Once we get them all into the appropriate position, we have to put this plate down in between and a cable runs underneath there and a hydraulic line runs underneath there. That's as far as we've gotten so far, but I wanted to tell you guys exactly how we did it and how we lined everything up so it's all appropriately done. You do need to read the specs for the thickness of the concrete. This requires at least four and a half inches of thickness on the concrete and the anchor bolts need to be set at least three and a quarter inches and we are set to three and a half. So that's it. We're gonna move this into position, take our measurements. We're gonna measure twice and drill once. We're gonna take a hammer drill with a three quarter inch bit, go down in there, drill out our holes and mount this thing. As you can see, we've got both towers lined up right here. This is a bit of a challenge. Again, you need two people to accomplish this task. So the distance between these two is 134 and 5 eighths, and we can find that in the installation manual. Pretty simple critter. Once we get it to that width, we lay down this black uh, ride over pad right here. That is bolted down by some hex head uh, bolts, and we've already connected up our hydraulic line which I'll show you, we'll get you a good shot of that too. So basically from this point, we need to make sure that each tower is perfectly level. So we've got everything spaced out the way it should be. We run our string line right down the edge here to make sure that both of these are facing each other perfectly in line. Then we'll go ahead and we have to level up the blocks, drill our holes, place some metal shims underneath. We're gonna use some uh, window and door shims to get it just where we need it. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide our metal shims into place and then we'll anchor everything down. Again, you need to have the right concrete setup for this tuxedo lift. You've got to have 
uh, at least four and a half inches of concrete and they recommend a little bit more really. The more concrete you have, the better off you'll be. And we need to be away from these relief joints so that we don't accidentally heave up our concrete pad. We're pretty close to the drain over here, which is kind of disappointing. When I built this building, I wanted the drains to line up perfectly with the doors and this one does not line up. It lines up in the center of this 28 foot bay. So that's why we're doing a little bit of head scratching and we'll probably have to put a few extra shims right here because it's clearly just a little bit cattywampus. This is a 220 wiring unit. We will not be wiring this up because I simply don't have power up here to the shop building just yet. So this is preliminary, just setting it in place. Consult your electrician if you're gonna go ahead and get it wired up into place. We'll run conduit down from the ceiling and feed this critter right here. Now, Josh, why did we decide to go with wood shims right here instead of just shimming it up with the, the metal ones? Well, it helps you get underneath it. If you already have it set, then you can just slide in your shim, the metal shims. Otherwise, it'll just, you'll try to slide two or three at a time and that top one will always fall off and you'll be fishing it out from under there. Yep, be wobbling a little bit. But if so. it's already set, you just slide them in. Drill your anchors already. Good to go. Tighten her up. That is a money shot. That's perfect. 100%. Now we're ready to start drilling our holes and getting everything mounted up and we'll put our metal shims in place. The drill that we're going to be using is a Milwaukee uh, hammer drill. This critter right here. Awesome tool. And again, we're using a three quarter, not a three eighths. It's a three quarter inch bit. And we set this thing, uh, the depth finder on the bit all the way down to about three and a half to four inches. So next thing we have to do guys is hang our hydraulic motor and pump. This weighs about 45, maybe 50 pounds. Put those through, right there. Drop them in the holes. You Got one, both sides. am I? Yep. <laughs> like a globe. Well, that went easy, huh? So we've got this all mounted up, guys. It's just loosely mounted for now. There's an adapter right here. This adapter screws into this block. Then it goes down via this hydraulic line right here to this banjo connector right there. And then all of our hydraulics will be hooked up. We are using the recommended um, hydraulic fluid for this machine. Whatever you decide to get, it says it in the instruction manual exactly what hydraulic fluid. And it takes 12 quarts and we'll fill this critter up. You got it? Yep, balance is good. <laughs> is it stout enough? Supervisor has arrived. Supervisor showed up, guys. We really got to crack down. So now we got us a lift. <laughs> All right, we are on officially day three of this install. My buddy Josh had to leave. He hopped on a plane yesterday back to Illinois. And I've got a few things to button up on this critter. So I'm gonna go through everything that we've already shown you just so you know if you're installing one of these. There are no good videos out here on the internet for a budget two post lift in your shop. And the next lift we'll be doing will be a four post lift. You can expect that in a probably month or so, something like that, once we get power here in the shop. So let's take you through real quick exactly what we've done so far, and then we'll button up all the rest of it. So if you'll remember, we had to route our cables through here. So the first thing we did, we started with, is getting everything centered. So we got the two post or pillars centered where they needed to be and our measurements needed to be correct. Your instruction manual will have all that information. We have the arms in place right here, but not fully installed. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that. And we don't have all the bolts in here because it took six batteries on the Milwaukee hammer drill to accomplish this task. Now, we had to go in and we had to tighten these cables. These cables need to have right around a half of an inch of play in them. And that's about what they have. They have a lock nut and this lock nut is not in place. This is the last lock nut that has to go in here. I wanted to show you. Uh, we snugged it down right here and that cable runs down through this channel and right up here into here. Okay, so down through the channel, back up and back down, I do believe. We've already got the lock nuts in place for this one. And again, this cable has to have about a half inch. We want to double check these after a couple of weeks and after a couple of uses to make sure that they stay nice and snug and tight. So that cable runs through. So both of these have even tension on them and that's something that's very important. This is the locking mechanism right here that locks the gear into place. Uh, basically, if you want to keep your lift arm in position. You can see right there, it has just a slight amount of play. If we need to move it, we'll simply lift that up 
and rotate it around, drop it back into place where it needs to be. We've still got a little bit of tightening to do. There's a set screw right here that we'll set down in to make sure that paw engages with those gears. Pretty cool, pretty simple stuff. It's locked in place pretty good right now. Let's we'll see if we can back it up. Nope, can't do it. So we got one more of those to do and it just takes a little bit of finagling on this critter and this is what it comes like. So it looks just like that and you'll slide that down through and mount it all up appropriately. So we'll set that guy to the side. Again, this is from Northern Tool. It is the Tuxedo Lift, Tuxedo brand lift. We will not be able to use this critter today, but I wanted to show you everything how it all goes together. So there's a hydraulic cylinder right in here and a chain that rides in the back. Hydraulic cylinder is fed through under here also. So there are two cables and a hydraulic cylinder in here to the second hydraulic cylinder, which brings the lift up and down. As you bring the lift up and down, it has paws back here. And this is a safety release latch, okay? So you pull that and it unlatches the safety release. Uh, Right now it's locked into position and it cannot go anywhere, okay? Again, you need to have at least, I believe it said four and a half inches of concrete right here, either rebar reinforced or reinforced with fiber concrete. And that's what we have here on the Stony Ridge is fiber concrete, okay? There are caps right on the top here. Those caps need to be bolted down. Those caps are partially bolted to the frame that this lift came on in the crate. And if you do order this lift online, you will have to have, uh, tractor or forklift to get it off of the trailer. We've got a couple bolts to snug up on our pump right here. This will be our power source. It runs on 220 volt, okay? And this will take uh, our hydraulic fluid right here. And we got a minimum and a maximum level right there. We will not fill it up with hydraulic fluid until we have power hooked up. That'll be the last thing that we do. But I wanted to show you guys how everything buttons up. So I've got just a few more little details to tighten up real quick and we'll have this thing all the way installed. Super fun. Let's get busy knocking out the tiny details. Okay, this is the plate that you'll run over right here and we've got to snug it down. It basically takes a, what is that, number 10 hex head. That one started right there. That did not come in this socket set. So we'll go ahead and snug this critter down. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. So we got to snug up our pump. Our pump's not hooked up to power yet. Again, we'll have power in the shop very soon, but we don't have it yet. Supply chain issues. So the last detail you need to know is about these arms, these arms that swing out right here. So you've got a couple different pads you can put on here. There are some pads that rest right on this arm, and then there's a fully adjustable arm that'll go up under most anything we have. So any tractor on the farm I need to raise up, or any Jeep or any ATV or UTV, I can raise it up just by extending that arm right there. This is notched or indexed, and this has a little gear paw right there. You can see the paws in it. What I'll do is I'll pull this pin, take out this washer and spring, and slide this down into that hole, okay? Wanna make sure that everything is slid down appropriately, so the only adjustment you really have to make is to get that paw down there where it needs to be, the appropriate place that it needs to be. Make a simple adjustment and bam, it's right there. Let me show you real quick. Then I'm gonna take the spring and I'm gonna slide it back up onto this shaft. Spring goes back up, washer, push that up and I'll reinstall my cotter key. Bend that guy back, good to go, okay? So it's spring loaded, we pull up right here and this engages the paw right there. So if I wanna move it, I just pop it up and I'll rotate around, okay? You have to engage this nut all the way down onto the paw where it squeezes it and appropriately engages it. That's it. Well, folks, we've successfully installed a lift. If you have to do this, you're gonna need two people and it's gonna take you probably about three and a half hours. We spent the most time preparing to install the lift. And again, it's a tuxedo lift. 
preparing it and making sure that we know exactly what we need to do. So I wanted to have, you can see my Dodge pickup right here. I wanted to have enough room to park a vehicle, a long truck, like a quad cab truck or a dually right here. And I wanted to have enough room on the other side right here to park another vehicle so I could double stack them basically. The secondary process, thought process here, was toolboxes and workbench. So we needed four feet for toolbox and workbench and another three feet out from that. So what I can do here, this is a 50 foot wide building. I can fit two vehicles and have my workbench in here and have plenty of room to work. So that's what it was all about, all the planning. We want it to be centered on this door. And again, this is the mega shop. This is a 112 by 50 foot shop. And this is where we're gonna be doing all sorts of awesome projects here on the Stony Ridge Farm. So guys, thank you so much, guys and gals, for coming to see me here on the Stony Ridge. Hit that like button on your way out the door. I'll post a link down the video description to that critter right there. I think you'll really like it. The next lift we install will be the four post lift. And we've got the Bronco project right over here. I've got a Willys Jeep project down in the other building. We've got a lot of fun stuff to do in this shop. This is your wintertime fun spot, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Hey there, folks. This is you mm. my kind of seen your camera just in the wrong place here. Hold on there, just a minute. There we go. Okay, something bit me. Nice. 50, and it is a awesome sh <laughs> It's awesome. Pretty stout. This is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Mouthful of Slubber. Here we go. Let me just walk up. Uh, like a booger problem going on here. I think I got it. A little bit done, and we've got to in total to the per. Gotta stop being a butter mouth here. Drink beer. I know. Need beer. Equipment. We are installing a stalling stool. Got a peanut gallery back here. Hey, bud. <laughs> We're gonna get some cool bloopers on this one, guys. I got the butter in my mouth. It's a, somehow. <laughs> what, what happened? It's official, everybody. I'm a dummy.